Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for His church in the air, and then with His church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption. Welcome to another LHB Last Days update. Um, we're going to be changing moderators each time, so don't be confused that I'm now talking and Chris isn't. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, Can You Lose Your Salvation? And today's video is called Once Lost, Always Lost. So, uh, Chris, why don't you give your opening statement? Yeah, um, we first of all, welcome to all our viewers. We thank you for joining us again, right? Um, there's a new video out, new documentary that's claiming to debunk eternal security, right? They say that you can lose your salvation. Some of the uh, speakers like Joe Schimmel um, from Simi Valley, California, something like that, Blessed Hope Chapel. Um, Michael Brown is you know, very famous. A lot of you guys know who he is and a few others that claim that you can lose your salvation and they twist scriptures uh, to try to prove their point. And today, it's not going to be a long video, but we're going to try to just destroy their arguments with the scriptures, not our opinions. And uh, and that's what we're here to do today. So again, welcome. Jose? Greetings and salutations. Um, this uh, idea to, to talk about this uh, came out after a bit of an argument in that that ensued in, in regards to the, the, this documentary that was being presented on our uh, site on Facebook called The Last Hour Bereans. Um, if any of you are interested in joining, please feel free to do so. Um, there are some questions that we're going to ask you and um, you please, please respond to the questions it's it's that easy i we can't accept somebody just because you want to get in but you know we don't know where you're standing because we can't approach you correctly if we don't know where you're at okay uh, that being said this um title for today is appropriate once lost always lost okay because they in essence are saying that um you can lose your salvation but what happens when you lose your salvation? That's what we want to we want to point out. Okay, how do you lose something that is given to you by an eternal God? And the key word is eternal. That's what we need to point out. That's why we want you to understand why we say what we say. We're not doing this to insult your intelligence. We're not doing this to insult your so-called uh, teachers. Okay, we're only here to point out the truth. And the truth comes from the gospel, and the gospel is the truth, okay? Once you understand that, once you understand why we follow this doctrine, because it's biblical, it's not hearsay, it's not based on innuendo, it's not based on uh, supposition, it's not based on pre presupposition, it's based on the truth of the word of God, you'll understand, okay? And when you hear the word church fathers, please understand what this means to us. When they say church fathers, they mean the Catholic fathers, second or third generation removed from the actual apostles who are the father. They are the pillar, the pillars that are built out on the foundation of Christ. They are the first line. We get our doctrine from them. We don't get it from Irenaeus. We don't get it from Origen. We don't get it from Polycarp. We don't get it from Justin Martyr. We get it from the word of God. Tradition. Matthew, Matthew Mark, Luke, Luke and John. John. Okay, mm -hmm. that's where we get it from. We get our understandings from Paul, from Peter, from James, from John. That's where we get it from. We don't get it from, uh, okay, um, <laughs> Irenaeus said this. It doesn't happen. Okay, <laughs> please understand what we're trying to tell you. These guys are removed at least, at least 60 years. Okay, a whole generation and a half. So please. Mm -hmm. Please, we're doing this so that you understand what eternal security is, not what these people supposedly think it is. All right. So the verse that I would use to address these men that made this documentary is Galatians 3:3. 3, 3. Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are ye are ye now made perfect in, in the flesh? 
So one of the very first, actually the very first line of this documentary was, um, once saved, always saved, flies in the face of the constant teaching of the Bible from Genesis 1 to Revelation end. So, Chris, what do you have to say <laughs> to that statement? <laughs> Uh, I'm laughing because, you know, we just did a series on eternal security and we addressed all of this stuff. And we, you know, if you guys haven't seen it, go back in the archives. It's there. Um, you know, these guys, especially for some reason, Joe Schimmel, when he was on that documentary and he's sitting there, he was taking joy. If you look at his face, he was taking joy in the fact that we can lose our salvation. He was so happy to share that. So, and it's it's ironic that he's the pastor of a, a, a church called Blessed Hope. <laughs> the guy that doesn't even believe in a preacher rapper. So, where's the uh, rapper? <laughs> a preacher. <laughs> a preacher I'm MC rapper. Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember rappers in the Bible, but <laughs> continue. A, a preacher rapture. <laughs> I'm P. <This> John. <laughs> Uh, MC Paul the Apostle. Okay. No, no. Um, <laughs> no, he, he doesn't believe in a preacher rapture, uh, but yet his church is called Blessed Hope. He doesn't believe you can you, you, you can keep your salvation, that salvation is eternal, but it's called Blessed Hope. Look, his church should be called the Blessed Nope, because there's no hope in it. And I, mm -hmm. I go to the, you know, I call them Second Corinthians 11ites because this is where they're found, these individuals. I believe people like Schimmel, even Michael Brown, and all these people that believe in a Jesus that cannot save or keep you saved, okay? I don't believe they're brethren at all. Why do I say that? Because they're believing in another Jesus, a Jesus that didn't say it is finished, but a Jesus that says, well, I started it. Now you got to continue it. Okay, that That's a different Jesus, okay? Second Corinthians, and by the way, that's a different gospel. Uh, chapter 11, and we'll go through uh, three and five, three to five, and then we'll go through a, uh, uh, verses 13 to 15. It says this, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Now, keep that word in mind, subtlety. It's not overt, but subtle. Mm -hmm. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Another, another word, word to remember. Another word you got to get, get out. Yes, simplicity. simplicity. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Now, why am I quoting this scripture? They are preaching a Jesus that says, hey, I started this thing of salvation. I got you in the door, but now you got to keep yourself in the door. Okay, that's another Jesus. Whom we have not preached. Or if you receive another spirit other than the Holy Spirit, okay, we, we call those demonic spirits, which ye have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with them. You might fall for it, in other words. You may fall for this. Now, going down to verse 13, speaking of, of these guys on this documentary, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, um, the word eternal, and, you know, I'll, we did this in our series, but I'll do it again here. It means lasting or existing forever without end or beginning, okay? Um, the reason we believe in eternal security, and they, they harp on that word, security is not, that word is not there. Yeah, but eternal life is. The word Bible is not in the Bible either. The word rapture is not in the Bible either, but the concept is, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but the concept is, there's three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. The concept is, right? So eternal security, the concept is, how do we know this? It says in 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse 2, For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Now, here's the thing. The reason we call this once lost, always lost, that, that documentary they put up, is because they tell you 
if a person, if a Christian who's truly saved, if they fall into sin, they lose their salvation, right? And then they got to repent again and get saved again. But here's the problem. How do they know they haven't fallen into sin? How do they know they haven't sinned? And if they sin, that means they're lost forever because in Hebrews, it says there's no more room for salvation for them if they should fall away, which, by the way, was a hypothetical question in Hebrews. Because mm -hmm. if they kept reading that very same chapter, it'll tell you you can't do that. It says, though we thus speak to you, we believe better of you that you are saved. You know what I mean? So they leave that part out, though. They don't want you to read further. Yeah. OK, so by their own logic, once they fall into sin and they lose their salvation, Scripture says they can't get saved anymore. So that's mm -hmm. why we call this once lost, always, always lost. lost. Yes, yes. They they do um, mention the early church fathers or the Catholic early church Catholic fathers and that they taught that you can lose salvation. And they say that the only people who taught that you had eternal life or eternal security were the Gnostics. Um, so, Jose, who are the eternal fa or uh, church fathers, and are they correct in <laughs> that statement? I'm going to give you a couple of names for church fathers. John, Peter, mm -hmm. Andrew, James, Jude. Get my drift? Paul. Yeah. Okay. These are the church and, fathers. And the greatest of the church fathers, Jesus. And Jesus. Yes. <laughs> but Jesus is the cornerstone upon which the church is built. Amen. The foundation I will build my upon church. which we we believe. The word of God is what we believe. That's our foundation. The church fathers, these apostles, the that started the AA, that turned the world upside down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Never wavered in the same doctrine. They had the same doctrine. Now people say, well, they, well some were talking to Jews and some were talking to the, the Gentiles, but the message was the same only through Jesus Christ. Only through Jesus Christ, his finished work, only through him. You accept the free gift of God through Jesus Christ by faith, and God will grace you with eternal life. The term eternal, without beginning and without end. God is an eternal being. And when God says he's going to do something, it's done. Done. Okay? Amen. It's done. It cannot be undone. Eternal life cannot be taken away once it's given, okay? Now, a lot of you will sit there and go, hey, well, that means I have a license to sin. No, it doesn't. Anyone who believes, who truly accepts Jesus Christ, who accepts the gift of God, who accepts it and takes it in, is transformed. It is a new, per he becomes a new person, a new creature, okay? The, his heart is changed from disbelief into belief. Do they stop making mistakes? By all means, no. Again, we're talking about, she just brought Galatians up. Mm -hmm. It started in the spirit. You cannot continue it in the flesh. It is a spiritual thing that continues until we are glorified, which then, then the physical happens. Our bodies are changed. We are transformed mm -hmm. into the glory. But our spirits are already sealed. Mm -hmm. uh, in the... In the talk there, I was listening to one of them saying something about, well, what's sealed can be unsealed. Mm -hmm. okay. Who's going to unseal what God sealed? God That's right. Who's, who's sealed stronger it. than him? Yeah. God mm -hmm. sealed it. I'm really trying because uh, it's really hard for me. Okay. It really is hard for me. I have very choice words for these false teachers. Okay. Vipers is one of them. Okay. Hypocrites. Okay. They do not, they interpret the, the, the scriptures according to their higher critical thought. In other words, they're doing the same thing, okay, that Satan does. What have God really said? Does that mean what it means? Mm -hmm. okay? Yep, they have, down on the word of God. they have these titles after their mm -hmm. names, after their, they have a doctorate in this, that, and a third, okay? I wrote back, I posted something a few, a few, uh, maybe a week or two back in regards to if God had wanted to make the, the uh, salvation so complex, he would have hired intellectuals and, and, and scientists and all that to, to complicate it. Okay. He chose fishermen and businessmen, simple men living simple lives in order to simpli simplify the message. It's a simple message. Okay. Believe in me and I will change you. It's not believe in me and I will change you only if you follow what I'm telling you to do. 
what was the when mm -hmm. when they says they go well you can't be a christian because you're not following his commandments what are his commandments there are only two there are only two if you take a look yeah. love god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your being with everything that you are and to love others as you love yourself not as the world loves, but as he loves. He sacrificed. It's called. It's a thing of sacrifice. And you sacrifice doesn't mean going out there and carrying your cross every day. Okay, that's discipleship. That's showing mm -hmm. people that you're a believer. Sacrifice. Sacrifice is knowing that everything that you have, everything that you are, is because of him. Mm -hmm. That's sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's because of him. Yeah. And whatever he's going to ask you to do in the future, you're going to do. You may, may do it reluctantly. Jonah is an, an example of a, a reluctant prophet. Okay. But he mm -hmm. went and did it, right? Okay. And not only was he more effective because in, in a way he was a little more effective. God knew what he was going to do when he, when he sent them out. It, may, it was more glory to God because of what he did that he came. Think about going up to Nineveh and you're looking like you just got spat out of something. Okay? <laughs> a big fish. In your hair. <laughs> The you smell. The hair the, missing and you smell it's not like, something you see every day. <laughs> okay? The simplicity of the gospel is very, it, we, we've talked about it over and over. First Corinthians 15, one through four. We've talked about John 3, 16. We've talked about Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. We've talked over and over about this in the last, when we were talking about eternal security. And yet there are some of you out there in the group that immediately follow Oh, after these, dare I say, idiots mm -hmm. who complicate mm -hmm. the gospel in order to yes. confuse you, to make you uncertain of it. Read the scriptures. Spend more time in your nose in the scriptures instead of mm -hmm. following some Joe Shimmel, Joe Scammer. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Michael Brown is an Armenian. Now, for the most part, I don't have a problem with a lot of he says. He, he's on point on some things, but it's like a clock, okay? A mm -hmm. clock, a broken clock is only correct twice twice a day, okay? Um, Zach Poonin sounds like he's against uh, against Augustinian thought, yet when you listen to him, he sounds more Augustinian than Augustine. All right, mm -hmm. there is beyond the shadow of a doubt there is more more wrong with this with this the very people that are sending you this message that you that should have sent red flags up from the get go mm -hmm. you listen to these people and 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 no offense to you sam please don't take this the wrong way. i'm not i'm not generalizing but have you noticed that it's always women that bring up these silly subjects well yeah yes. you know we're <laughs> we're actually uh some of the ladies of our group actually mentioned mm. that very thing that a lot of the uh, mm. women unfortunately are in leadership positions in churches mm -hmm. and they are leading a lot of people astray this is this is just a fact this is not you mm -hmm. know trying to be you know beat up on women or anything this a is just godly, a godly a godly woman and we have some godly women in this group i mean they uh, they are on point and i have been corrected on some on, on some occasion i thank god that they corrected me and that i was humble enough to be corrected but there are some of you out there that get corrected by these very women and you won't humble yourselves. Yep. You don't sit there and actually sit down. Oh, well, you need to read the scriptures. Well, I have. I'm pointing them out to you. You're still not. Mm -hmm. You're still doing the same thing. You don't, yeah. You're not the one that's not reading the scriptures. And, 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 speaking of, and speaking of the scriptures real quick, mm -hmm. these individuals, they like to go to Hebrews on this on this yes. uh, yes. documentary from what I saw. Right. Yeah. They'll go to Hebrews three. And uh, for instance, they'll read this uh, Hebrews three. Uh, I'll read verses eight to twelve. They go harden not your hearts as in the provoca of provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest, okay? Now, I want you to look at some phrases here. They do always err in their heart, and check this out. They have not known my ways. It's not that they knew my ways and they forgot my ways. They mm -hmm. had not they never knew. known. They never knew. Okay, good. Uh, mm -hmm. Verse 11, so I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren. So they say, oh, brethren, talking to believers. No, it's talking about the Jewish brethren. 
Jewish brethren. Let's keep that in mind here. This is Hebrews, okay? Who's, who's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> who's the letter being written to? It's not being written to Joe Schmo, the Gentile. To the Hebrews. The, <laughs> the Hebrews. So it say, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Let me ask you a question. If you're saved and you believe the gospel, obviously you're not an unbeliever because yeah. you're a believer. Okay. All right. Yeah. Unless there be it. So there wouldn't be an evil heart of unbelief in the believer because you're a believer. Anyway, all right. In departing from the living God. So they say, brethren, departing from the living God, Christians can lose salvation. Now they stop right there. They don't continue reading but we're going to continue reading, okay? It says, but exhort one another, verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. Now we're talking about believers, okay? If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, what does that mean? So if we does this mean that if we maintain our salvation to the end? No, it's talking about if you hold the knowledge, the belief of the gospel to the end result of the gospel, which is salvation, you'll be good. Mm -hmm. Okay. For we are, verse 14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if we will hear his voice, the Holy Spirit, harden not your hearts as in the, the provocation, the one we just read about. For some, some. There's two distinct people groups being talked about here. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. So they heard the gospel. They just didn't believe, okay? How be it, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. So everybody came out of Egypt physically with Moses, but not everybody was a believer. Now, here we get to the point they don't want us to read. These last three verses, they don't want us to read. But with whom was he, God, grieved 40 years. Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we mm -hmm. see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They were never mm -hmm. saved. That's the whole point. But they don't want to read that far because they don't want you to say, oh, this is what God is talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to throw that in there, Sammy. Sorry, go for it. No, you're good. Yeah. No, they, they take verses out of context because they don't want you to understand and they what's actually the happening. Verse, and they twist the very verses to promote yes, that a, they are... a supposition or prep uh, presupposition that never was mentioned in the in the verse in the first place. The first yes. place. That's right. Yes. <laughs> like they they mention um that Paul was not wanting to be disqualified. So Jose, why don't you read those verses <laughs> that they brought up, which was 2 Corinthians 12, 21. Hold on, let me get there. 2 Corinthians 12, 21. Okay. And lest, when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed, Give me a second while I pull this 13th chapter out. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. As I told you before and foretell you, as if I were present the second time. And being absent now, I write to them which heretofore have sinned and to all other. That if I come again, I will not spare, since I, ye speak seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you, word, is not weak, but is mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? And yes. verse 6, yes. verse 6, verse 6. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not <laughs> reprobates. Yeah, All you got to do is keep reading, man. The very they, literally, they literally stop. They because stop they're like, right oh, there. see? And then you're like, if you... A believer, a believer is not a reprobate. A believer you. cannot mm -hmm. become an unbeliever once he's been saved. He, there is no look. You can, you can back. Uh, they call it backsliding. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fall away in a sense 
uh, uh, from from discipleship. You can fall away in a sense from fellowship, but you can't fall away mm -hmm. once the gift is given. You cannot be exactly. unborn again. You cannot be unborn again. How Use, many people in natural natural lives they're born here, from their mothers? Give, they can't go back in my, the womb. I want to give you my COVID COVID vaccine back. <laughs> Yeah, all I mean, the mRNA out. It, we don't need this anymore. No, come I on, mean, people. I mean, Jesus gave us an example of a carnal Christian who was carnal for a time and then coming back. The prodigal son. The church, the church of Corinth he, as well. Yeah. Was, yeah, and what, but was the prodigal son still the son of the father? Still a son. Still well, a son. He was gone. He, he, that's he, right. Still, still a son. He, as a son, may have thought, "Hey, you know what? I'll just go in and at least be as a servant." Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But his father, seeing him from afar off. Went out to beat him. him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, I don't. <laughs> I don't have what verse it is, but they do bring up the whole Paul was, uh, you know, not wanting to be disqualified. Oh, well, can I can can I can just the, say one thing that of one of the verses that Jose read yeah. right here in verse five, where it says, "Examine yourselves, whether you mm -hmm. be in the faith. Prove your own selves." You know, uh, it's talking about examining yourselves. Make sure that you're in the faith, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure that's all that, that that's all it's saying. Like don't 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 sit there and say, "Well, I believed. I walked down an aisle. I said a prayer. Yeah. You know, yeah. as a child, I got water baptized." No, no. Examine yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you believe this gospel that I have just preached to you? If you believe that gospel, yeah. then you're in the faith. But if you don't, yeah. if you're adding to that gospel by anything, by with works or whatever, you're not. That's I, the whole mm -hmm. point. Exactly. I yourself. believe when you're talking about the yeah. disqualified part, you're going to have to look. I believe it's in Corinthians. I know Paul was talking about race, running the race. Yes, yeah. running the race. Reward. Yeah. And, and not that, wanting and that's to talking be disqualified. About, that's talking about that's rewards. That's talking about reward. It that's what I was going to say. Yeah. It's talking about rewards, not salvation. You know, right. because they I, use I was, that. They use that verse to what, be like, what, see, what, what, script, what scripture is that? Let's look, let's look that up. So they mention First uh, Corinthians. 9 24 through 27 which they say then proves that you can lose your salvation because paul who you know was doing all this wonderful work was even afraid that he might lose his salvation that's what they say the scripture means so chris why don't you read it and then we can discuss it starting at verse 24 it says this know you not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize remember that word prize guys Mm -hmm. Something you win in a race through effort, through works. Okay. So run that they may obtain. And every man that striveth, another word, strive, okay, as worketh, for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, certainly. So so fight, I, I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway or disqualified. Now, here's the thing. Paul's talking about losing rewards. That's what mm -hmm. he's talking about. That's what the prize means. You can't work for salvation, Salvation is a free gift, and we could go over hundreds of verses talking about that. It's a free gift. You can't – that's a gift. This is talking about running a race or your Christian walk, your Christian race after you're saved, and you want that crown. You want that reward to present before the throne of God. And we find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, it says this. For we must all – talking about Christians now – appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, th their Christian walk, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest into your consciences. Okay? Th and then now, now, this is talking about being at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, if you go to 1 Corinthians Chapter 3, verse 13, this is what happens at the judgment seat of Christ. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And if any man's work abide which he hath built there, thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself 
shall be saved yet so as by fire. It's very clear. It's talking about rewards. Your Christian walk, you do get rewards. And these in your motivations, the intent of your heart when you're doing the work of Christ will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. This happens after the rapture. And by the, by the way, the guys in this video, they don't believe in the, the pre-tribulation rapture either. So yeah. I guess they could just, they could rip yeah, this they, out of yeah. the Bible. They, they can yeah. work their way through the, uh, you know, the, the post host, the, um, Oh, <laughs> I love the post. I'm going to make it all the way through. <laughs> Congrats. We, through that when we talked about that. And I talked about the population at the end. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or are going to be right mm -hmm. after the goat and sheep uh, judgment also. Uh -huh. Or are going to be gone. But you, when you confuse salvation with reward, I mean, mm -hmm. it is the ultimate reward to be saved. Okay. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It is the yeah. ultimate reward to be, get saved. And please don't don't misunderstand this. But it doesn't matter. Anything. No, everything else is 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 gravy on 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 the mashed potatoes. Yeah. What to be simple? Mm -hmm. One you one you get is a gift, and the other you earn after right. that gift. Mm -hmm. And when That's you're earning, simple. and you're earning it not because you're doing it to make to to earn it. You're doing it right no. because you've already got. God the gift. loves a cheerful giver. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That not that just doesn't mean anything about giving giving to the church or giving to the widows or giving to those that are, loves a cheerful giver. You're not doing it because, man, if I do this, God's going to reward me. No, right. you're doing it mm -hmm. because it is the thing to do. It is God. So, so, so again, do. again, so they understand clearly what we're saying. Salvation is a gift that you mm -hmm. can never lose. And the rewards are things you work for in your Christian life after say after you're saved, and it has nothing to yes. do with keeping your salvation. Exactly. All right. You're not yes. going to lose yes. your salvation because you you sat there and believed with all your heart and accepted mm -hmm. the, the the free gift of God mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ through faith in Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, and then sat around on your duff for the next forty years and died of a heart mm -hmm. attack sitting in your chair. Okay. And when you get up there, what do you have to show for it? Nothing. Right. You're in. Okay. You're in. Mm -hmm. That's it. You're yes, part of the family. People, yeah. stop listening to these people that are telling you that you can lose your salvation because they're just giving you parts of the scripture. They're doing the same thing Satan's been doing since the beginning. Yea, hath God said. Mm -hmm. Cause doubt mm -hmm. on clear on the clear word of God. You know, I know the time is running from a Sammy, but I wanted to get this in here real quick. Um, yeah. Uh, Second Corinthians, uh, chapter one, verse nine and ten, and we've we've read this all throughout our series on eternal security. We read this, but hey, we have to keep reading it. God's word is forever, right? So it says, "But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves." Again, these guys want you to trust in yourself. They want mm -hmm. you to trust in your works, your righteousness. You could maintain your salvation through what you do. Their faith is not in Christ. Their faith is in themselves, their righteousness. And we know the scripture says that all, all of our righteousness are as filthy rags to the Lord. It's not our righteousness we should trust in. It's Christ's righteousness. Okay. I just wanted to point that out there. It says that we should not trust in ourselves. But in God, which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust, he will yet deliver, delivered us past, doth deliver us present, will yet deliver us future. That's all sin for all time, past, present, future. There's nothing you can do in order for you to lose your salvation. This passage has to be ripped out of your Bible. It has to be undone. This, this, this passage I just read is a mistake. God made a mistake. He didn't really mean to put that in there. An angel snuck up behind him and wrote it in there, edited the 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 it's the teacher's edition of the Bible that we don't and really you might no. as well throw out John 3 16. You might as well so, throw out yes. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. You might as well throw out every section of the Bible that teaches you that by grace you uh -huh. are saved through faith. And and, and throw Christ. out that word grace. Throw out that word grace too. Oh, yeah, that's throw the other that one. out. Yeah, can't yeah, have yeah, that one. Throw it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and, and and eternal. You get you can't have the word eternal oh, yeah. there anyway, because no, you know. No, no. Unless, of course, you're talking about eternal torments, which, unfortunately, these individuals, if if they don't truly repent, change their minds to the true mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, they're going to be in internal torments. Go for I it, Sam. I had a pastor oh. who said it perfectly. He said it perfectly. Uh, I'm not surprised about who I won't see in heaven. I'm going to be surprised mm -hmm. about who I do see in heaven. <laughs> yes. Okay? And you can mm -hmm. vice versa that. I mean, think about it. You're thinking that this guy is such a great man of God. But he never mm -hmm. believed in him. He he went through the motions. 
He worked hard. Well, well, like a lot of the deception, and I and I mentioned this earlier, was the fact is the fact, and I think this was off camera when I mentioned it, but like mm -hmm. for instance, Joe Schimmel. You know, a lot of people yeah. believe he's a brother because he exposed, yeah, because he exposed rock and roll. Like, okay, look, we number one, the world is gonna do what the world does. That's no surprise mm -hmm. that those in the world are gonna act satanic, right? Mm -hmm. So that shouldn't catch it. That's easy to do. We can see them coming a mile away. But the remember that scripture I read where the subtlety of Satan, the subtlety mm -hmm. of the the subtlety is, yeah, you can easily see the ones that are in the world that are, you know, obviously under the influence of Satan, Marilyn Manson, all of them guys. But it's harder to see those that are dressed like sheep, but really are ravenous wolves. wolves. All these yeah. guys on that video are multi-millionaire. Joe Schimmel, multi-millionaire. These guys are they're making money off of mm -hmm. uh, you know, these expose videos, but yet they don't yeah. want to. They don't want to expose themselves. John, John Oswald. Uh, John yeah. Oswald. Uh, um, he's a he's a professor at the Asbury Theological Seminary. We talked about this. Remember what happened last year? Oh, mm -hmm. this great movement! Look, it's gonna God's gonna shake the mm -hmm. heavens and the earth with, with this movement. What is mm -hmm. what's happened ever since then? Yeah. Nothing. nothing. You yeah, know nothing. Why? Because nothing comes out of nothing. They never they never preach the gospel. Right, right. and not, not to mention not, signs and wonders. Yeah, and not to and by the way, yeah, the, the Bible warns us about uh, the, the sign, signs and wonder movement in the last days. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing how. Uh, matter of fact, let me let me find that real quick. In Matthew chapter twenty four, verse four, it says this: "And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ, and shall deceive many." And then you go down. It says that again in verse eleven. Uh, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And if you go down to uh, verse 23, it says this, uh, then if any man shall say unto you, um, lo, here is Christ, or there believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. It goes your signs and wonders mm -hmm. movement right there. Mm -hmm. In so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. So yes, uh, Jose, uh, you're right. The great signs and wonders movement, that uh, the Ashbury revival, all the other revivals, mm -hmm. the Lakeland revival with Todd Bentley, yeah. you know, and, and all and, that. And, you know. and this is this is also that came up to me. I'm looking at all of these. I think they were showing the tree of the churches as they grew from the from the fundamental yes. part. And it, mm -hmm. notice where most of the most of the camp that these mm -hmm. people from okay they're in the nar or the new mm -hmm. new age type of thought okay or word of faith okay? yeah it has yes. nothing to do with the actual establishment of the word in, in you know in our hearts the word in mm -hmm. our hearts jesus it has to do with an interpretation based mm -hmm. on the desire of men to be more holy than others okay it's a yes. false dichotomy they they're how can you turn around and say that I speak in tongues? Speaking in mm -hmm. tongues is 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 the is the epitome. That's a person who's a believer. Look, word tongues. Okay, the word uh, glossolalia, if if, uh, if I'm pronouncing it, is a known tongue. I'm talking to you and I'm speaking in tongues. And let's say that um, Chris understands ethiopian and you understand uh greek i'm speaking mm -hmm. to both of you and you're hearing me speak in ethiopian and in greek at the same mm -hmm. time because it's a known gift. language by the way it's a, a known, known language, language yeah. that's coming out remember mm -hmm. the three thousand that were saved were listening to these apostles preach to them in, in their known, own language, yeah. language. He's, talking, he's talking in Cretan. No, it, it, said, it, it says in their own language, not exactly. just a known language. So, like you said, everybody was hearing them. That's what that that's what the miracle was, and and it goes mm -hmm. back to to the Tower of Babel. The same God that confused yeah. the tongues and made it, you know, people not understand it, was the same God that made everyone understand it at that point. It's not mm -hmm. that uh, Peter changed his language he was still speaking what you know the hebrew he was still speaking that language but the mm -hmm. listeners were hearing it in their language and to come yeah. back paul was pointing out the simplicity of the gospel he consistently pointed out mm -hmm. the simplicity of the gospel mm -hmm. he was sent as an apostle to the gentiles for that very reason because it's mm -hmm. a simple gospel to understand believe in jesus put your trust in him have faith and allegiance in him and he 
will save you. You are saved yes. because of your belief in him, not because of what you've done, but because of what he's already finished. Amen. Amen. I do, before we close, I do want to talk about um, in, an eternal security verse that they attacked, which was John 10, 27 through 29, which is my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. No, you know, no one can pluck them out of my father's hand. They literally said that, um, that you can jump out of the father's hand, but <laughs> Jesus doesn't mention that. You would think that if we could jump out of God's hand willingly, that Jesus would have mentioned that. Um, because they say that since the sheep hear Christ's voice and they follow him, that proves that we can lose our salvation because believers can walk away from Christ. But what what is this passage actually saying, Chris? Listen, <laughs> all right. So no, it, it answers itself. No one can pluck them out of my father's hand. Mm -hmm. No one. That includes yourself. It, you know what's amazing to me? They can read this, and this is why I know they're blind, the leaders of the blind. Because they don't even see that verse they just read. Mm -hmm. No one can pluck us. What does that say? And basically, you know, when you talk, they mix up discipleship, yes. okay, with salvation a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, look, let me read some scriptures here. Uh, since time is running short, I want to get these scriptures out real quick, and then we'll, we could go ahead and wrap it up with the gospel, yeah. right? 1 John 5, 13, these things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know, know mm -hmm. that you have present tense currently, now and forever, eternal, eternal life, life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Romans 6, 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Why? Because grace much more abounds. Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. You cannot lose your salvation. Re uh, Revelation 3, 5, he that overcometh, mm -hmm. and who's who's the ones that overcome? We're the ones that are in the one who overcame, and that's Christians. Yes. Any believer is an overcomer because Christ overcame. That's why. Mm -hmm. Okay? He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. I will not, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. For you guys that think you can lose your salvation, read that verse over and over. Look at it. Mm -hmm. It says, God will not bl mm -hmm. blot out your name if you're an overcomer. And how are you an overcomer? You believe in Christ, the one who overcame. The Bible's crystal on this. And he, it's mm -hmm. like the Lord is hammering it over and over in almost every verse of the New Testament. Hey, once you're mine, you're mine forever. OK, mm -hmm. then you got um, Romans eleven six, And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. I know that's a, a mouthful there, but it's meaning it's either grace or it's either works. It's not both. Mm -hmm. And we okay? already know that works don't work. Works don't work. Uh. <laughs> look, look, look. It says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Think about this. The only mm -hmm. thing you could work for wages is, you know, that's mm -hmm. what you get when you work is yeah. death and hell. So if you want to work, that's mm -hmm. what you, that's your wages. You're going to get paid death, hell, eternal destruction. You are never, but if you just ever, get the gift, you, you have yeah. eternal life. You are never, ever, mm -hmm. ever, ever going to be able to follow the law perfectly. You as a nope. human being cannot. You want to know why? Because you question everything. And the law was meant to leave us guilty. I'll, people mm -hmm. don't realize that the Lord was teaching us a valuable lesson by the law. You know, you, you have the, the, the Israelites striving and they're, they're trying to keep mm -hmm. the law, but what, what keeps happening every generation? They keep failing and failing and yeah. failing. Here comes Jesus yeah. in the new Testament, you know, saying, you know, listen, I'm here to fix what you guys couldn't fix. I okay. Came, exactly. <laughs> I came to fulfill. Not to, That's not right. To destroy. I came to fulfill. That's mm -hmm. right. He so was the one that kept it. That's why when he was when he was on the cross before he gave up the before he gave up the spirit he said it is finished. Mm -hmm. Okay? He finished the law. The law is no mm -hmm. longer our taskmaster. Oh, one, yes. one, one more. One more. I got to get this out before I oh, forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jude 
chapter one. I just love destroying these 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 guys' arguments, man. I love it because they are they they are some of the wickedest people out there because they are destroying the faith of believers. Mm -hmm. They are they are they are robbing them of the joy of eternal yeah. security. Yep. And this is why I do take pleasure in destroying their arguments and exposing them. It says in Jude chapter one verse twenty four. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. He mm -hmm. is the one that keeps us from falling. He is the one that keeps us faultless. Now, I don't know what these guys are going to say to that. They're going to probably try to twist that in some kind of way. I don't really care. This God knows how to communicate. He says what he means and he means what he says. And I'm done. Amen. So Jose, I'm sure there's probably maybe even some Christians who possibly came across this documentary and they're, they're maybe scared. They're, they're fearful. They're questioning. Reassure them with the gospel and also tell the gospel to people who don't believe. I'm going to, I'm going to read it word for word simply because it's going to be a little easier for me to do this. And I'm going mm -hmm. to use a different version today. Okay. I know. Don't don't freak out because uh, you know how I am about the the King James version. I just love that version. For me, it's the richest one of the mm. group. But okay, I'm going to do it out of the Holman uh, Christian Standard. Okay, now brothers, I want to clarify for you the gospel I proclaim to you. You received it and you've taken it uh, and you've taken your stand on it. You are also saved by it if you hold to the message I proclaim to you, unless you believe for no purpose. Okay. Mm. For I pass on to you the most important of what I've also received, that Christ died for his sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to over 500 brothers at one time. Most of them are still alive, but some of them have, have uh, fallen asleep. Okay, Jesus Christ died for you. He took upon himself the sin, all the sin, from the time you first recognized it and maybe even didn't recognize it till the last breath that you take. He took it upon himself. God saw him as sin and turned his back on him, saying that he could not see sin. The payment was made then and there forever. He died before you were born, and yet he saved you before. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. If you accept the gift that he's presenting. And how do you accept the gift? Admit that you're a sinner in need of salvation. Know that there is nothing that you can do. No work you can do can bring you into salvation. Accept the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, through faith in his finished work. And what do I mean by finished work? I just put it out. That he, he was born of a virgin. That he lived. He died on the cross, was buried. And on the third day, he rose again. Dying, he nailed your sin with him and took it with him into death. Rising, mm -hmm. he justified us forever because now we get to live with him forever. Mm -hmm. Alive, not, not in a spirit, just in a spiritual sense. Like some of these guys are sitting there. They sit there and they give you a carnal reason why you have to continue to do this and to do that. They add more. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just like the Pharisees. They add mm -hmm. works onto your salvation in order mm -hmm. to make it even worse for you. And what happens as a believer when you get up there and you were, you were dependent on your works? You receive nothing because that's wooden stubble. Mm -hmm. A true believer... Once he becomes a believer, he may not have many rewards. I'm not saying that mm -hmm. there, there, there are people that are in heaven that don't deserve what they got, okay? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that they're in heaven and that the rewards that they got, they got it by, 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 uh, by grace alone because, no, they worked for it. But they didn't work for it in order to get the reward. They got the yes. reward because they worked, because they were saved. You don't get rewards. You're not going to get rewards. Because you're sitting there talking to other people about Jesus Christ and expecting something in return from it. You see what I'm saying? We've had people that are sitting there talking, oh, I saved 13 souls today. Mm -hmm. Or I saved 150 people at a, at a, at a revival. That, that has nothing, you know, if you're boasting upon what you're doing, then is it really a work? 
for God. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what we call wood, hay, and stubble. That's those wood, are the rewards. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but if God, all of a sudden you get this, you you know you you get the crown of life, but all of a sudden you get three or four more crowns, and you don't mm-hmm. realize, wait a minute, what did I do? Mm-hmm. At the bema seat, when he's doing when he's burning this and he's purifying and he's showing you, you did you may not have even remembered that you did this. That's what Christian. Don't let the left hand know what the right hand's doing. That's mm-hmm. what Christianity is. We love each other. We exhort each other. Okay. We correct each other. We don't do it because we like it. I don't, I don't any, I don't like any more jumping on some false teacher and you know, uh, although mm-hmm. physically it, it's it is satisfying to be able to <laughs> beat the snow. lay hands. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do. I correct people not because I want to look like I'm the 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 higher one on the totem pole because I am not. Yeah. I am not. Okay. I'm dirt compared to some people in my estimation. But I serve my. I serve a living God, and I do not want you to be outside of that of that love. I want you to be able to participate in the love of God. To be able to to be there at the celestial shore, celebrate at the new Jerusalem, okay? In the new heaven and the new earth, celebrating the love of God, not in outer darkness, lamenting everything that you've done because you thought. Mm -hmm. Those guys that are fooling you, okay? Yeah, they're going to get their reward, but you're going to get your reward too because you never bothered to stick your nose into the one book that's going to get you out of the trouble that you're in. That's That's right. That's what you need to do. If you are not saved, if you don't think you're safe, okay, I just remember what I said. Admit you're a sinner in need of salvation and accept the gift of God through Jesus Christ. Faith in him. And that's it. Everything else, as a genuine believer, as you grow in Christ, as you grow in fellowship, as you keep reading the Bible, my suggestions are the book of John and Mm -hmm. Romans first. The mm-hmm. book of John and Romans first, then work your way through the rest, because the staple of what we believe is in Romans. It is the it is the doctrinal it's the doctrinal thesis. And let God. me add one. Let me add one more. If, in order to understand your need for a savior. Mm-hmm. All right. Go to Genesis chapter three. Boom. Yeah. Right yes. there. Yes. Exactly. Now, from Genesis to Revelation, only God can save. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation, only by the shedding of blood will there be a remission for sin. And let me try to explain this to you, uh, you false teachers out there that that put this out. God sent himself in the form of his son to die for us, to take upon the guilt. He paid the debt. The wages of sin is death. So he died. The wages are... he. No, I'll take it. I'll take it for the team. I'll take it for you because I love you that much that I'm willing to become a man to die for you. And on the third day rose again so that we would have the victory in that in that uh, salvation that he's given us. That's the victory part. That's the gift that he's given Mm -hmm. us that eternal life to live forever, to live from the beginning. No beginning, no end is the one thing where we as Christians are humbly thankful for. We are humbly thankful. I'm so thankful that he saved me when he did. I'm so thankful for that. And you can be too. And you can have the assurance of knowing that that salvation is eternal because he said it's eternal. The word eternal means without beginning and without end. And an eternal Mm -hmm. God cannot uneternalize. Okay? Because that would make him a liar. That's a new word. (laughs) Uneternalize. I like it. Very good. Well said. Okay, Chris, do you want to give the gospel as well? I, I mean, it, it, there's nothing really to add, but, uh, you know, listen, don't don't trust in your righteousness. These mm-hmm. individuals on this video that, you know, saying you can lose your salvation, they're trusting in their works, man. I mean, they don't even see the danger that they're in. No, you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're blindly, the Bible calls them blind leaders of the blind, man. Like they're going off a cliff, but they're leading you off the cliff as well. And you, you, you don't want to yeah. follow them. Uh, trust me, you don't want to follow them. Um, the Lord is not a, a, the author of confusion. And if you're feeling confused by after watching that 
that documentary, believe me, it's not of God. You know, mm -hmm. as uh, Jose said, uh, it, it, it echoes and sounds like the serpent in the garden of Eden. Yea, hath God said he see the, the way Satan works is he, he, he causes doubt on God's clear word. It's a clear word. Mm -hmm. Don't eat of the tree. Or you will die. That's clear. There's nothing there's yes. nothing to guess about. That's very crystal. Here comes Satan. Well, did he really say what you think he said? You know, maybe mm -hmm. die didn't mean die. You know, it's like no, no. That's what. So when they, what they're doing is saying that God is a liar. He doesn't mean eternal life. When he says eternal life, he really means temporary or conditional life. He doesn't mean eternal. Mm -hmm. uh, when he says that, uh, when it says that, you know, where sin abounds, grace much more abound. It doesn't really mean. That you could fall, you could you can't fall from grace, you know. You, no, mm -hmm. you can't fall from grace. Grace much more abound. It holds you. Mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. holds you as mm -hmm. dear children. We have peace with God. Nothing can remove that peace. No sin you can do can remove that peace. Will you get chastened? Yes. Will mm -hmm. will, will you get disciplined and and, and, and corrected? Yes. If but you, you are believe, still a son or a daughter. Simple as that. If you believe that. that God can un get that God will unseal, yeah, He's sealed. You must really be a special kind of person. Feel special, <laughs> yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, 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 listen. Um, God is not up there playing games with your with your soul. Okay, he's he not. doesn't have any. He's not. He doesn't have an angel by the book of life. You know, rubbing out and putting back in your name. You know. By the way. He knew all the sins we would do before mm -hmm. he decided to go to the cross. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. Like he knew we, you would be repeat offenders mm -hmm. even after you believed. So mm -hmm. why would he save you to begin with to only, you know, know that you Condemn would be you removed? Again. Yes, it doesn't. Come on, let's think, guys. There's no let's logic. Think. There's no logic in God saving you in the first place if you're just exactly. Going to That's why we call this program Once Lost. Always, always lost. lost. Mm -hmm. These individuals, and, and you know, I, I don't say this lightly, but these individuals, they don't know the God of the Bible. They are the second Corinthians 11ites, okay? That's mm -hmm. clear. They're believing in a Jesus that does not have the power to keep you saved. Think about that. Mm -hmm. That's another that's Jesus, not... also found in second Corinthians 11. So mm -hmm. that's the Jesus they're presenting, a Jesus mm -hmm. that's weak. Mm -hmm. That okay, he he got you in the door, man. That sounds like a Catholic Jesus because they believe that <laughs> you know, you know, he, he just opened the door for you to work your way in. Uh, listen, mm -hmm. guys, and and you know, we're gonna wrap it up. I know, um, we love you, we care for you. We did this special video. I mean, it, it, the Lord put it on Jose's heart and my heart. This, this, it, with, I mean, days from each other, didn't even know he had the same thought. Mm -hmm. Um, but when this when this documentary came out, we knew. We knew this was a direct assault on the word of God, a direct assault on the children of God. Mm -hmm. Okay. And very detrimental to those who just came to the faith. They, they're on milk. And to hear this, can you imagine? They don't know anything, the but fear. you know, and, yeah. And, this, and these poor believers are going to go and stand before the Bema seat. Okay. Confused. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unnecessarily. Yeah. Unnecessary mm -hmm. believers that are, uh, were running the whole time giving up because they actually mm -hmm. believed some knucklehead who doesn't understand the word of God. Because I'm yeah. sorry, they can have all the PhDs in the world. But mm -hmm. that you know where the you know where our true wisdom comes from. It comes from the Holy Spirit. That's right. From, and wisdom and wisdom is different than knowledge. Exactly. I'd rather have, yep. I'd rather I would have, rather wisdom have wisdom any day. Amen. Keep your PhDs. I want godly Amen. wisdom. Go ahead, Sammy. Amen. Sorry. You know God makes it clear all throughout the Bible that once we have believed in Christ, that we are saved forever. And it doesn't matter how we live because you can be a carnal Christian. Both of the books of Corinthians prove that. And all of us here have lived carnal lives at points in our Christian walk after we I'll, believed I'll in even, Christ. I'll even say one better. Every Christian is a carnal Christian. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But when we were, when all of us have been in our carnal state as Christians, did God leave us during those never. times? I will never leave you nor forsake, nor forsake you. you. No, he stayed. Yeah, he stayed with us the whole times. And once we confessed our sins, we then had fellowship with him again. And we had that restored relationship, but he never abandoned us and he never will. So that that's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the program and learned a lot. And we'll see you next time. Maranatha.
Maranatha. Maranatha. God, God bless. bless each and one of you.